Okay, so Blue On's always advertised on their their app that they have tech support, two minute wait time or less. And also, what they say is it's not just for TDX20, their R22 replacement. It is for anything AC. So we're gonna call them up right now and we're gonna challenge them on that two minute wait time. And we're also gonna challenge them on a couple of technical questions. Well, one technical question and one question about their product specifically. So let's try this out. Okay, so I have my phone ready to go. Here's the Blue One app here. This phone here is not the greatest, so it's not picking up as well as it should, but I think we're gonna get the gist of it here. So we're gonna click the Blue One app. This little tab here says support. And then we get this screen. This dude here looks like Andy Samberg a little bit. It's kind of funny. So some of the techs have noticed <laughs> that he kind of resembles Andy Samberg. So once we, we're in here, we're going to hit call tech support. And you can only do this inside the app, by the way. So this is the number. And we're going to hit send. Let's see what happens. And I got this connected to the Bluetooth in the van. You've reached our 24-7 Blue On Tech support. One of our real-life techs will be on the line to help you before you can run out and grab a cup of coffee. Sit tight and remember, we got your back. This call may be monitored or recorded for quality and training purposes. Let me turn up the volume a little bit. So we're at 20 seconds. Let's see what happens here. Tech support. This is Brian. Brian, wow, that was 30 seconds, man. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. We keep trying, man. Yeah, with I'm timing you. It's it's Gary McCready. How are you? Hey, Gary, I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? How can I help you? Um, so listen, I uh, I wanted to ask a couple questions, and then. Hmm. Well, one is a state statement and question, and then I want to get your feedback on. Then I want to ask you a question related to Blue On um, regarding sort of the same same topic. So I found back like many many years of this when I'm charging up. Let's let's say a standard scroll compressor, standard AC, nothing fancy, just standard straight up AC. When I'm charging that up, um, at times I've seen the compressor get really really cold, and the whole body starts to sweat. What do, you, what do you think of that? Okay. Uh, sounds like you're forcing too much liquid into the compressor, but uh, let's talk about it some more. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, 100%. I, I agree with you. So I was I was curious as why why would we we be forcing too much liquid in that compressor? Like could could it could it be that I'm charging it too quick? Could it be there's maybe the fan yeah, is not yeah. running or, or something along those lines? So let, let me let me back up because my mind automatically goes to conversions uh, when somebody calls tech support. So gotcha. Uh, when you say you're recharging the machine, is it with any refrigerant that you've seen that, or is it uh, when you're doing conversions? So, no, nope. any any refrigerant. I want to ask you a conversion question next. Okay. Um, but any any refrigerant. Okay. okay. So if Obviously, compressors don't like liquid. They want to see vapor. But in if you're working with a blend, R22 is not a blend. It's a single constituent. But the same thing, it doesn't. Compressors don't like to see the liquid. So if you're feeding it too fast, to the point where the compressor is starting to get cold and actually starting to sweat, chances are you're putting too much liquid in, which means that you have your suction valve on your manifold open too far and you need to kind of back off on that. So I've mm -hmm. got a rule of thumb that I always used uh, for, for charging liquid side, because we know on an R22 tank, if we're pulling off the vapor, we end up uh, losing the pressure in the tank. So everybody's always done it. You flip the tank and then meter it in. So uh, I've never gone 15 pounds over what my suction is running when I'm doing that. And that has come out pretty well to not have the compressor get too cold, I know that I'm not putting too much liquid in and possibly taking the oil out as well as, and the scrolls will take a little bit more, but if you put enough uh, liquid into a scroll, you're gonna wash the oil out and then it's gonna have the same effect. It's gonna break the compressor. 
Yeah, and and I've got I've got kind of a, a rule. I want to see if you agree with this. Sort of a rule of thumb as, and this is kind of my HVAC six sense talking. A rule of thumb as to how that compressor should feel when it's charged correctly and running properly. Like the top of the scroll is always smoking hot. Like you can't leave your hand on it for more than a few seconds. Um, where the suction enters right at that little spot there it will be cold but then if you put your hand around the opposite side uh, of that suction pipe and you feel the compressor it's usually roughly the same temperature of your hand or a little bit above depending on the conditions you're running in do you kind of agree with that I, I follow your train of thought and yeah that would be the touchy-feely method yeah. um, and and so if you combine you know if if there's and, and it's funny I just had this conversation in a training class in Baltimore um and and the guys were asking the same thing sort of and it's like if you if you don't have the hand feel on your manifold to be able to meter it in they actually sell a device at the parts house that will not allow liquid in mass quantities to go in it's a filter and you can put that on your suction manifold on the uh i'm sorry, on the manifold on the suction hose so that you can still feed full flow liquid in on the discharge liquid line, but when you're metering it in, even if you walk away and, and not there to have your hand on the, the suction uh, gauge, then it would still meter it that way, just to ensure that you're not flooding out that compressor, whether it's a piston or a screw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen a few different yeah, kinds of those. I, I, I understand the touchy-feely method, and uh, I also understand uh, metering it in slowly so that you know because you can listen to the compressors too and you can tell when they get angry that you're overfeeding as well but yeah the yeah. pitch the pitch will definitely change awesome so i guess you've kind of answered my next question because when we're using when we're doing a conversion from um r22 to um tdx20 um that you guys that you guys manufacture we have to charge that as a liquid, correct? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right. blends need to be charged as a liquid because you get into that whole uh, separation of the uh, the components mm -hmm. if you start pulling off a of vapor. So it does need to be charged as a liquid. And when you're doing your final tuning, so I say that typically if you're doing a conversion from 22 to to uh, TDX20 or R458A. You've already pulled the machine down. You've got your 500 microns. You've done all the leak tests and all that stuff. So when you're initially charging it back in, you're you're putting in liquid on the liquid line. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to get your final charge and your final tuning until you start the machine. And you still have to charge a blend as a liquid so the tank's still upside down. So it's even more important now that you either sit there and monitor it like my, my, I guess my suggestion was 10 to 15 PSI over uh, what the machine is running. So in other words, if I had a 40 pound suction and I'm adding liquid still, I would not go over 55 PSI. And then your method would work as well. You can sit there and, and meter that hand valve as well as keeping your hand on the back side of the compressor opposite of the suction line. And then just listen to it. All right, so through movie magic, I've gotten a haircut and a beard trim through that whole video. Very, very weird. Anyway, we found out that Brian's very knowledgeable. It took him only 30 seconds to pick up. So if you guys have an issue outside of TDX20, or 458A, and you need to speak to somebody, you need a hand, you call Blue on Tech Support through the app, and they will help you that's what it's all about so anyway guys hope you enjoyed the conversation with myself and brian i'm out happy hvacking